This podcast is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be financial or investment advice. Seek a licensed professional for investment advice about crypto or any other investment. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Blazing Crypto Podcast. We are Justin and Brandon, and we are coming to you on Friday morning, April 1st. I promise, no April Fool's jokes. We are not kidding. We are not joking. We are here. We are all business. We are all business, Justin. So uh, we're coming to you on the, if you've been following us, the eve of the Final Four. My Fighting Blue Devils are playing the, uh, let's see, what words am I allowed to say about the Carolina Tar Heels on our on our podcast and keep it, uh, keep it, keep it G-rated. Anyway, uh, we're, uh, we're coming to you on the, on the, on the eve of the final four. I think what is also interesting about from a crypto perspective, we're entering the month of April. Uh, Justin, I have a list of highlights from the month of March. Uh, it's about 50 bullet points deep of significant, massive, you know, game altering news of, yeah. of what hit the crypto space in yeah, the month of March. Of I'm going to read five of them, the top five, and it gets bigger and better and whatever from here. Apple, rumored to be partnering with a company called Strike for the Bitcoin Lightning payments. Luna buys 28,000 Bitcoin worth over $1.3 billion for their treasury reserve. They're going to buy at least $3 billion total. MicroStrategy, God bless Michael Saylor. MicroStrategy <laughs> takes out a $205 million loan using Bitcoin as collateral to buy more Bitcoin. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, on the Ethereum NFT side, Board Ape creator Yuga Labs raises $450 million in a funding round at a $4 billion with a B valuation. Um, I, I, I mean, I could, go, I could go on, right? Like th- the numbers we're talking about, nine-digit numbers, 10 digit yep. numbers, 11 digit numbers. Um, it, it, it just goes on and on and on. One of the things, if you've been listening to us for any length of time, is we talk about pay attention to development, pay attention to adoption more than you pay attention to price. So, all of this is happening in March while Bitcoin is down 40 to 45 to 50% from its all time high. Ethereum and Solana are down more than more than that from their all time high, right? If you if you only watch price, it's very misleading. However, however, as good as all that is, the reason we're coming to you today is I have Justin, I have a concern. I'm concerned that people are confusing two things as if they're the same thing. And, and, and we, need, we needed to record a podcast to make sure that our audience does not confuse, conflate, misunderstand two things. By the way, our concern is for the audience, not for Bitcoin. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I am not I, concerned about Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly. I'm concerned related to Bitcoin for you, uh, you, the audience, and, and you being us, uh, I'm concerned for us that we don't misunderstand something. And this is, I would say, of like primary, primary, primary importance. If you listen to this podcast, you should not get this part wrong. Um, but I think that, that the, the market in general is probably getting this wrong, or at least are on that path. Here's the point. All the news, all the, you know, Lionel Messi, one of the best soccer players ever, signs you know 40 million dollar crypto sponsorship deal crypto.com sponsors the world cup uh in, in the fall you know stephen stephen curry and tom brady and crypto 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 ftx and, and you know coinbase and it's just crypto everywhere right nfts everywhere it sort of creates this mountain of noise it almost acts as like all you see is all the smoke kind of just billowing up and all that's on the positive side there's also the negative stuff, right? Crypto company scams users to the tune of 425 million or you know, project gets uh, hacked and people lose $600 million of Ethereum, which happened in March. Um, and, and the point is you go, oh no, crypto is not going to make it or energy news comes out. Here's the point. My concern is that when people hear news about Bitcoin, they assume it applies to all of crypto. Yeah. And when people hear news about crypto, 
they assume it all positive or negative applies to Bitcoin. Here's the statement. Bitcoin is crypto, but crypto is not Bitcoin. Justin, what's your reaction to that? Well, I think I think my initial reaction is I have sympathy for why this can be confusing because crypto is so big. Uh, there's it encompasses so much, right? I mean, you've got everything from NFTs, DeFi. Who knows, you know, how many different coins there are. I, I wouldn't even be able to give you a number right now. Um, so the space is huge. It's massive. And so many different people come into the space from different angles um, that, you know, what, what ends up happening is depending on how you enter the crypto space, who your friend is that introduced you to it or, or you know, whatever the situation might be, um, that kind of forms your perspective of the market, right? And and when that happens, it's really it's really easy to kind of like look at some of the smaller things, some of the smaller coins or whatever, and and view them as bigger deals than they really are, right? And sort of make the small things big and the bigger things kind of like bring them down a little bit, right? And so at that point, it's just like what you said, it's all that noise. So I have sympathy. I think, um, I think one thing as you were reading off like all those different little, you know, news bits there, uh, one of the big things that stood out to me is the, in, the, the companies that are buying this stuff up, right? The big players that are coming into the game, they care about Bitcoin. All they care about is Bitcoin. And you might be able to make the argument that some of them care about Ethereum. Uh, but there's a reason for that, right? And so, like, I think the kind of the whole point of this podcast today is hopefully to help our our listeners understand that yes, companies are interested in crypto in general, but why are they buying Bitcoin and nothing else? There's a lot of good reasons for that. So I think we're going to get into that today. Yeah, MicroStrategy did not borrow two hundred and five million dollars and spend ten million on you know, the number 28 coin in total market cap because yeah. it has a higher ceiling of growth than Bitcoin. And again, <laughs> every everyone has a different strategy and different purpose in this. But but again, the, the point is not, the point is not, do not take, do not listen to this episode and go to your wallet, your exchange, and take all of your stuff and move it 100% into Bitcoin. That is not the application from this podcast. Right. I'm not saying you shouldn't have more exposure to Bitcoin or less. The point is, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a lot of our audience and the whole purpose of our platform is to help people that are entering the space, that are new to the space, people that that may be six months into the space and, and they're now helping people get into the space. They're being asked, hey, what coins should I buy? What should I consider? And what I'm saying is, the people that I'm talking to, the people that text me questions, the, the, the people I'm hearing, the things I'm hearing sounds to me like people don't understand Bitcoin. Yep. They, yeah. If you don't understand Bitcoin, all of the other stuff, you're just, you're not going to be able to accurately understand anything else or that's you're going to, you're going to wrongly understand it. Yeah. Like, and that's kind of what I was, that you said that perfectly. That's kind of what I was trying to get to with because of, you know, like I have friends that came, their first interaction with crypto was through NFTs, right? And NFTs are really fun and exciting. It's like, oh, okay, they're spending all their time learning about NFTs and how that works and, you know, getting into the industry. I encourage that stuff. That's really good. But because of the way they entered the market, they kind of looked past Bitcoin, right? And, and that's really what we're getting at is um, there's, there's a massive difference between Bitcoin and a lot of the other stuff that's that's in the market, the rest of crypto, is what you're saying. Exactly. We've entertained before. We've entertained before just the idea of people saying, "I missed Bitcoin." You know, Bitcoin already went from 200 to 2,000. It already went from 3,200 to um, you know 65,000. I've already missed Bitcoin. And, and and really, the point is, it's not as much my concern or what I want to deal with of what your portfolio allocation is to Bitcoin. It's that 
you cannot set your portfolio allocation if you don't understand Bitcoin. And I would say the very same thing to the same degree about Ethereum. Like you, you have to understand Ethereum to set a, an accurate and correct and healthy portfolio allocation. But today we're dealing with Bitcoin, right? It's not yeah. to, this is not like against Ethereum. I would, we could do the same episode and probably will do the same episode on Ethereum. Yeah. The point is, Bitcoin is not just one of the sort of sliding sliding um, things where you're like, ah, you know, 20%, 25%. Recently, and this is a lot of where this is coming from. Justin, you mentioned a friend. You know, I had someone text me something about Bitcoin that like, it's as if they were surprised by Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sort of becoming what it always has been. And it's not changing. It's just that more people are realizing it. And I had a friend that was surprised by Bitcoin and it was almost a little bit offensive to me, to be honest. Like I was, <laughs> <laughs> it made me feel like either I'm not communicating very well or someone's not listening very well. And again, we all learn at different paces and I just probably need to chill out a little bit. I just don't want my friends to be surprised by Bitcoin. That should not happen. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I had a friend send me Hey, you know, I'm I'm interested in putting in a non-trivial amount of money into crypto. What what would you think of this portfolio allocation? So he had been advised by someone that's been in crypto for two or three years, knows what they're talking about, but basically had like a list of six or seven coins, and Bitcoin had a twenty percent allocation, and like there were other coins um, that had 10, 15, and twenty percent allocations as well. And I just thought to myself. Yeah, the first thing we have to talk about is what is Bitcoin? What is Ethereum? Like, what what role do they play? And then we'll fill in. Like, those are the big rocks, yeah. right? You've heard the story of, you know, if you fill up a thing with sand, you can't put the big rocks in. But if you fill up uh, a bucket with rocks, the sand kind of fills in the cracks. That's the way we've got to think about this thing. And again, I, my concern is people don't understand Bitcoin. They cannot articulate I don't know what word I was about to say. They can't articulate <laughs> what Bitcoin is, why it matters, and the role it's going to play in the future. And how can you invest in something if you can't articulate the role it plays in the future, right? So I'm not trying to be discouraging. If anything, I'm, I'm trying to sort of like wave my hands and say, hey, guys, like we got to get this right. We got to get yep. this straight. Yeah, I think understanding the assets is like, like you said, that's a prerequisite to like talking about, you know, portfolio allocation. Because uh, it, it, I mean, it's not just like buying ten dollars, you know, of Bitcoin because you're curious about it. It's you know, if you're wanting to take the space seriously, it's really important that you understand sort of like I guess like fundamentals. That that's what we could call them. Yeah, exactly. So here, here's the point to dive back into our statement here. Bitcoin is crypto. But crypto is not Bitcoin. To offer an explanation of that statement, uh, so it doesn't just sound like we're sort of like grabbing a soundbite or creating a headline. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. It was the first cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is the first original OG blockchain. So Bitcoin is a blockchain technology. It is a cryptocurrency. There have been a lot of blockchains and a lot of cryptocurrencies that have followed after Bitcoin. So Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. Ethereum is its own blockchain. There are other what we call layer one blockchains. So they are not built on um, Ethereum. They are not built on Bitcoin. They are their own blockchain. Uh, sort of like think about sort of coding languages in, 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 in web technology, right? You've got um, you know, C Sharp and C++ and I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get off on the rails here quickly. The point is there are different technologies that all interface the internet. They are all internet coding languages, web coding languages, but they're different. All right, Bitcoin is crypto, but crypto is not Bitcoin. And the point on that means everything that you hear about Bitcoin may or may not and probably doesn't apply to insert other crypto here. The thing you hear about, insert crypto here, whatever project you want to talk about, Solana, like a favorite project of ours. Whatever you hear about Solana probably does not apply to Bitcoin. Yep. Now, things may be indirect, uh, indirectly inherit benefit, right? So people that, that are investing into Bitcoin, that may help Ethereum, that may help Solana. 
But if Ethereum, if Ethereum becomes the, the number one, it really doesn't affect Bitcoin at all. Like, and I just want to make sure people understand that. Do not assume a one-to-one -one connection with a crypto project or a crypto exchange or a crypto personality. Don't equate that one-to-one -one with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is crypto, but all crypto, almost all of crypto has sort of nothing to do with Bitcoin. Is, yep. Justin, is that, is that, I want to make sure that's clear. Is there anything that you want to sharpen on that statement or expound upon? Well, I was about to say um, Bitcoin, a good way to think about it is Bitcoin has no competitors, but that's our second point. So I didn't want to, <laughs> did I just jump to our second point? I'm sorry. <laughs> but like that was, that was really what was coming to mind, right? When, when you're saying that stuff is you, you have to separate it. Um, this isn't like, this isn't like Chase versus whatever, Wells Fargo versus Bank of America. We're, you know, these things are not playing I almost said they're not playing in the same space. They technically they are in the same space. It is cryptocurrency, but you're talking about very different products that meet very different needs for sure. Yeah, and again, we are not. I don't know if I've said this in our in just our pre-show planning or if I said this at the beginning of the episode. We are Justin and I are not Bitcoin maxis. So Justin, explain to the audience what what is a Bitcoin maxi. So a Bitcoin maxi, bless bless their little hearts. Uh, they're cute. No, they, I love to say that. I don't know. It's so condescending. Uh, they, they basically believe that Bitcoin is the only, the only real cryptocurrency of value and that essentially everything else is basically a gimmick, um, that's trying to compete with Bitcoin. Um, so they, it's almost like it's it's sad. Like they see the thing, which is Bitcoin, and they recognize it for the value that it is. But it's almost like they overinflate its actual use cases, um, and they basically say, "Okay, all of the other cryptocurrency will ultimately go away, and everything will become, you know, everything will be built on Bitcoin. All of the all of the different markets, the decentralized financial markets, the, you know, the NFT markets, all that stuff will eventually come over and be built on Bitcoin instead of Ethereum and Solana. And they're, it's like, they're so close to the thing, but they're missing, right. You know, something very important. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of, uh, in general, that kind of thinking as a category is just a mistake, right? To think, oh, everything's gotta be all or nothing. Yeah. Um, don't don't take any project and hear that right we don't think that about ethereum we don't think that about solana you don't understand technology if you find yourself making statements like that and i'm happy to i'm happy to be very forthright about that don't don't think things like that don't say things yeah. like that don't listen to people that talk like that is is my advice but that being said we are not bitcoin maxis i've said this before Bitcoin is not my highest allocation in my portfolio, although it is a very is it's the number two thing in my portfolio, right? I'm roughly fifty five percent Ethereum, around forty percent um, Bitcoin. Um, you know, Justin, and we've alluded to this in the past. Justin has a a very 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 heavy allocation right now on Ethereum, but that came from a very strategic, significant trade off of Bitcoin at a time when he was able to capture a massive Ethereum move. And so even though he's not in a, a big Bitcoin position now, as I told him before, that is not the recommendation for someone entering the space today. Like that move has passed, right? Like, and, and, yeah. and you can't follow that path anymore. So anyway, when we say, if we make a joke about how little, uh, Bitcoin Justin has <laughs> it's more of a it's more of a bit it's not it's not saying you know Justin doesn't believe in Bitcoin it's a it's a trading thing it's not a a market belief thing Justin did I represent that accurately you did no you did a great job I I would even say um you know I've I've gotten to the place where I watch Bitcoin the most I I am constantly researching and you know monitoring Bitcoin. Uh, and I, I, I guess you could say I, I care about Bitcoin the most. And that's kind of an emotional statement. But um, yeah, I, my current portfolio allocation will not be this way forever. I can guarantee you that. Um, but I'm feeling confident in navigating the space enough to, you know, 
make right. certain moves. Right. So here you alluded to our second point. The first one was Bitcoin is crypto, but crypto is not Bitcoin. Don't don't conflate, don't confuse, don't dilute, don't be distracted. The second one is Bitcoin. Bitcoin has no competitor. It's a very, very, very important statement. Now, that statement requires a lot of context. I don't mean that there are no other cryptocurrencies. That's not the statement, right? Bitcoin is crypto, but crypto is not Bitcoin. But for the problem that Bitcoin was created to solve, so now we're getting into the use case, the value prop, sort of the, the, the raison d'etre, if you will, the reason for existence, the reason to be, there is no other crypto that solves the problem Bitcoin solves, or at least can actually solve it to the degree Bitcoin can. There, yep. there is no number two. So I'm not talking about market cap. There is not another product on the market in the world that solves the problem Bitcoin solves. What is that problem? That problem is Bitcoin was created because uh, Satoshi, uh, the, the sort of uh, pseudonym for whoever created Bitcoin, whoever the actual person is, Satoshi saw that we have a, a massive sort of government-issued fiat currency inflationary problem. And that basically is the fact that governments solve financial problems by simply printing more currency. And, and they solve problems with printing more currency with printing more currency, as we've seen in the last two years. And this is not to dump on governments. We're in some weird times. But the point is, it is a problem nonetheless. So... Bitcoin was, this is a massive misunderstanding. Bitcoin was not fundamentally created so that you could go to McDonald's and buy a double cheeseburger with Bitcoin. Yep. If that happens, cool. That is not why Bitcoin was created. That is not the problem it tries to solve. So people that have criticized Bitcoin and said, it'll never be the number one world currency, they're only thinking from a transaction level. And I'll just be honest, that's like the 99th most important thing I'm concerned about with Bitcoin. I do not care if you are ever and you are, you already are able to transact with Bitcoin in a in a consumer way. I do I literally I do not care about that use case. That use case might be 5% of the overall equation and that might be too high. The problem it was created to solve is that people need a way to opt out of having their currency devalued. Companies need a way to opt out. Countries need a way to opt out. Citizens need a way to opt out. That may sound a bit renegade, cavalier, <laughs> rebellious, anarchist. I don't know. It shouldn't sound anarchist. The point is we have a financial, a fundamental financial problem in the world and there needed to be a solution. There is not any other cryptocurrency that solves that problem. So when you hear, and Justin, I'm going to end this, this sound bit in a second so you can respond. I realize I'm going on here, but when you hear that Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency or that Bitcoin could possibly replace as the, the global reserve currency, don't think about transactions at McDonald's. Don't think about buying something on Amazon. That is the, that is the functional transaction circulation nature of currency that's only like one of three ways to understand currency. The U.S. dollar is a global reserve currency from a value and stability standpoint, from a GDP backed whatever. It, it, it's about its value and it's able to be trusted more than any of the other currencies in the world. It's very possible that changes. And I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. I'm just, that's, there's a lot of signals that we're headed down that road. All U.S. issued debt is denominated in the U.S. dollar. Warren Buffett is famous for saying, we will be fine as a country as long as it continues to be that way because all we have to do is print more money to pay our debts. If you ever hear, and it's not trying to be doomsday-ish here, I just, but this is a very important point to understand Bitcoin, which is what we're trying to do. If you ever hear that the U.S. has taken on debt that's denominated in the yen, or some other currency, 
that you that needs to stand up for you. You need to see that. You need to hear that. And you need to think about Bitcoin. And also the fact that there is not any other cryptocurrency that solves the problem that Bitcoin solves. So I am trying to make an open and shut case for this. Because too many people hear Bitcoin as currency and they say it's too slow. It doesn't settle fast enough. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. That's all true. And that's not the point. All right, Justin, I'm going to end my, my rant here a little bit. Um, help, help me out. Where am I, where am I overstating? What, what do I need to, to make a bigger deal of? What's your reaction to that? I think the um, one of the big things that stood out to me is... Um, you kind of hinted at it, but part of the part of the reason that Bitcoin is so unique is because you know it can't be devalued, like you said. But the the reasons behind that is because it's like a core concept that we've we've mentioned a few times: decentralized, right? So there's not there's you know there's not a person that can go just print more Bitcoin. You know, I've I've said that before a few times, but like Bitcoin is extremely hard. I would even say impossible to control um, because of of how distributed it is, it how how decentralized it is, and how big it's become. Right, and and the more the more it um, becomes adopted, the harder it is to control. Uh, so that's kind of like, I guess that's another angle that you know might help kind of explain why why it's so unique. There's some significant, significant technical layers. In other words, if, if you wanted to pursue any one statement we've made, there are some significant technical layers to explore that I think will only <laughs> that will only end up with you being sort of more confident about what we're saying. Yeah. We're not asking you to take our word for it. It's just that we can't, you know, I'm not smart enough to explain all that to you. I'm not a good enough communicator. There are a number of resources if you want to understand more about this. Justin, I know you have a book or two that you recommend. I'd like to mention those here in case people just go, I want to understand this more or I need to gain sort of my own understanding. What are what are a resource or two that you would you would recommend here? Yeah, uh, the Bitcoin standard is probably that, that's definitely the number one resource I would um, I would recommend people to read. It's going to give you a great um, understanding of like what is currency and the history of currencies, um, why currencies have have failed, and why Bitcoin is such a strong currency um, from a technology standpoint. That's one. Another one that you could um, I would recommend. It's a very different uh, angle, but it's called The Price of Tomorrow by Jeff Booth, and he takes. Um, he takes a different angle and talks about inflation and deflation uh, and really kind of how our whole world economy is built on a, a like it's built on the backbones of inflation and inflation being a good thing, but then how technology is, is very, it's inherently deflationary and, and those things kind of coming at odds um, and the implications of that. That's not as much of like a Bitcoin book, like it's, you're not going to get a lot of technical Bitcoin stuff there. But it really helps you kind of have a um, a greater context, I guess you could say, uh, for how you should view Bitcoin. There are some. Um, I heard a, a CFO give a talk on Bitcoin, blockchain, etc., and he quoted a technologist um, who's sort of like kind of like macroeconomist technologist. I'm sort of starting to find a lot of interest in those two worlds colliding. But anyway, that's a different story. But he quoted this guy that said, I can't remember the, the, the source of this now, but he quoted a technologist who basically said, technology, the direction technology heads is to do everything with nothing. So software, tech, is about doing everything with nothing. Essentially, you know, for instance, when you think about, uh, I was listening to something last night that was talking about White Castle had hired had quote unquote hired, you know, 10 robots or 10 million robots or 10,000 robots. It, it wasn't 10 million had hired robots to flip burgers and it's called like flippy two or whatever. Well, the point is what they're doing is they're, they're doing their business with less, you know, right? Like they can't flip burgers with software, but they're getting as close as they possibly can. Um, so the point is, you know, Bitcoin is a, 
a financial network, a currency network that is doing things that currently government, Federal Reserve, central banks, national banks, local banks, like it is doing things that all of that infrastructure is built to do, right? Which is why you get so little interest rate on your, your, uh, your CDs and other things like that. And the point is it does it with software. But again, we could talk about this for, for hours, but I, I want to make sure people understand there are crypto projects that solve incredible problems or, or, or do incredible things. We are very high on those projects. The thing that I kind of want to like, I want you to sort of picture me in, in a goofy way, like jumping up and down about is we have a smart money problem. There is, we, we don't really have smart money. We don't really have, other than Bitcoin, like we don't have like technology that we have technology that is currency from a transactional standpoint. I mean, you can buy, I mean, 10 years ago, you could buy Xbox points or whatever they were called, you know, with US dollars. I mean, transit, that's a sort of a digital currency, but it's not deflationary. It doesn't solve the smart money that the inflationary problem, it's just another expression of it. I want to make this clear as well. Um, I'm actually all for a central bank issued digital dollar, but it doesn't solve any problems. It does not solve any, any problems from a inflationary. It's just a digital form of the problems we already have. So if you hear, and again, with, with Joe Biden announcing the executive order, like that's not bad news to me. If anything, it's good news. It means more adoption, more funding. Uh, it sort of tells people that are speculative, like, oh, okay, this is a legitimate thing. But the point is, don't, don't hear, oh, there's going to be a digital U.S. dollar that t- is going to compete with Bitcoin. That it, They're not the, yeah. not even close. It does, so, I will say, it does solve the problem of ACH taking 30 million years to send something. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's a lot of good reasons why they want to do a digital U.S. dollar. Uh, so it solves problems unrelated to what Brandon's talking about. You know. Exactly. And so I would say this again, Bitcoin has no competitor. It's the only digital currency, cryptocurrency that solves the, the fact that we have a smart money problem. It is the smart money solution to the problems we have. And, and I, I say that very definitively. Um, and that's so all of that is why I have exposure to Bitcoin. I do not have exposure to Bitcoin because of some quote unquote analyst that thinks it's going to go 10 X or 20 X. That's really not why I have exposure to Bitcoin. I have exposure to Bitcoin because I believe it actually solves a real problem that we have that is only going to become more real the further and further and further we go. I'm not a doomsdayer. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I am not like anti U S government for the most part. Um, that's a joke. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, but, but seriously, like that's, I just, every time I, I hear people talk about quote unquote crypto, I hear what they say, or I hear them dismiss something that I say about Bitcoin because of things they don't like about crypto. And I say to myself, oh man, I don't think they understand. Yeah. And maybe, and maybe I am crazy, but like, if you leave this episode today, and, and you simply understand that Bitcoin is not crypto, or sorry, <laughs> crypto is not Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin is a crypto that solves a very unique problem in a very unique way, and it has no competitors, and that compels you to dig in more. Success. Yep. Yeah, and I think the thing that, like the immense opportunity is present because not only does it solve a real problem like you're describing, but like, majority of the people in the world would not be able to describe that or like they don't see Bitcoin as a solution yet. Um, but you know, some of these, like I said, some of these major companies and countries, they do see that and that's why they're buying it. Um, there's a company this month and apologies. It just came to mind. I don't have the name in front of me. There is a, a blockchain sort of crypto based company this month that basically bought more Bitcoin than was issued. 
in the time frame that they bought. So they bought, they were buying Bitcoin at a faster rate than Bitcoin was being mined. That's the kind of thing that ought to make your ears perked up. They are one company out of 10, 100,000 millions of companies. The point is, if you hear the word supply shock, we could do an entire episode on supply shock. There's going to come a time when everyone sort of collectively realizes, oh shoot, this is an arms race. We are underexposed or not exposed at all. Everyone's going to come to the table and because of the finite supply, 21 million, by the way, block number 19 million basically is being mined today. I don't know if it has been mined already. April 1st, 2022, we, we, ha- we, have, we have 19 million out of 21 million Bitcoin blocks that are mined. So only two more million blocks will be mined over the next, I forget, 10, 12, 15 years, 20 years. 100 years. 100 years. Okay, yeah, there you go. Literally, it gets cut in half every four years. So the last Bitcoin block is, uh, it, may be, it may be 80 years away. Okay. 80 to 100 years. So now I've lost the trail. I, I, I went down. No, no, no. I went down a trail and then I forgot the trail that I was on. Um, I think the big, I think the big thing, well, I mean, we were talking about, you know, what is opportunity? And to me, the, the opportunity is seeing, okay, if you have the opportunity to buy something that people do not understand, um, or the majority of people do not understand, and it solves a very real problem, that is immense opportunity. Um, we were talking about, thank you, exactly. We were talking about, I had gotten into supply shock and basically yeah. said, we're going to get to a point where there, we actually are, are already here. Where if every millionaire in the world wanted to own one Bitcoin, they would not be able to do it. Yep. Okay, yeah, so... Like 40 it, million millionaires or something like that. It's crazy. Exactly, and there's 21 million Bitcoin. Like, so again, there's all these little tidbits and whatever and, and, and sound bites, but I, I guess the, what we're trying to say is do, do not sleep on Bitcoin. If you are someone that thinks about Bitcoin as just another cryptocurrency, I'm just telling you, like, that's, that's not the right, that's not the right play. Now you may look at Bitcoin and say, I disagree. Like, I have a different opinion than Brandon and Justin. That is fine. Everyone needs to do their own research, make their own um, mistakes. Sorry. Make their own decisions. <laughs> All I'm saying is don't don't be ignorant. Don't be right. ignorant of the problem Bitcoin was created to solve and the fact that the entire world is slowly realizing they have that problem. But most of the entire world has not figured out that Bitcoin is the solution yet. Justin... Basically, what you're saying is that smells like opportunity to me. Yeah. And I would encourage you, like, it's the situation is not that, like, oh, Brandon and Justin are the only two that that see this. Like, all you have to do, you know what, don't even read the books I mentioned earlier. <laughs> you just take your free time and go and start researching and look at the big companies that are buying Bitcoin and the millionaires and billionaires that are investing in it. And listen to them talk about why they're doing it. You won't have to do that very long to realize that it's something special, right? And they they realize that. And so, like, I, I started doing that several years ago, and to me, that was kind of like a big aha moment. And it wasn't really a moment in time; it was more of a a gradual aha, if you will. Um, but yeah, like, just go research and 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 look at what these you know, these companies that are buying this stuff by the, by the billions of dollars at a time, um, they, they explicitly tell you why they're doing it. My, my parting shot here is I'm a big advocate for employing your own common sense and instincts in, in the trading you do and the investing you do. Number one, there's really not another way to do it <laughs> other than just sort of blindly following somebody else. What I'm trying to do today is make sure that your instincts and your um, common sense about quote unquote crypto is split from Bitcoin. And I would say also split from Ethereum. Here's why. Bitcoin has been around for more than 10 years, 12 years, give or take. That's very significant 
from a history of the world perspective. I actually have the person's name this time. I've mentioned this law, but Moore's Law, in a nutshell, Moore's Law essentially states that if a technology makes it 10 years, you can reasonably expect it to make it at least 10 more years. In other words, you don't have to worry about, oh, it disappearing in year 13. There really is no uh, precedent for that happening in the history of the world that we have documented proof of, which is sort of what history is. <laughs> um, and this came about with, with computing and transistors, and, and th that's kind of when Moore's law sort of came into to, to sort of was, was a hypothesis that he ended up proving. All I'm saying is be, be suspicious of crypto projects. Be, sus be very suspicious of small startup ideas. That's healthy. But don't, don't import all that suspicion and speculation and apply it directly to Bitcoin. That's a mistake. You're not treating Bitcoin on its own merits. You're treating Bitcoin or thinking about Bitcoin on the merits of something else that is is basically is is fundamentally different. And I, my main goal today is do not simply loop uh, lump Bitcoin into a big bucket called cryptocurrency and see it as just one of 10,000 projects. Yep. All right. We have uh, we have a few series, uh, a few episodes in a, in a in a brief series we're going to do on this. It basically, it's about understanding Bitcoin or not misunderstanding Bitcoin. And so in the next episode, Justin and I are going to talk about we said that cryptocurrency is not Bitcoin. We're actually going to advocate for why you shouldn't even think about Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency category and what categories we would actually recommend and what we're predicting that Bitcoin will be sort of compared and contrasted to you know, in the near future if it's not even happening already. So I hope something in this episode was helpful. As always, uh, go back, find something question you have a point of interest and dig deeper you know do your own research not because you know we don't want to be held accountable for what we've said we do it's that you know you need to form these convictions and conclusions yourself sort of hold them yourself hope this has been helpful uh justin thanks for weighing in on that stuff uh, this is sort of a, a very if you can't tell a very passionate point for me um and hopefully it is uh something that will help benefit be of uh value to you going forward so for justin i'm brandon we will see you guys next time. Go Duke. For more information, check out our website at blazingcrypto.io. Additionally, if you have friends that are new to crypto, share our trailhead videos from our website, which is a great way to get introduced to crypto.